Greetings, my fellow freedom lovers and sovereign thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to the LL3 Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful swampy mangroves of South Florida. And today's date is Wednesday, June 24th, 2020. Well, well, well. How many of you still enjoy watching the mainstream garbage media, all the sports channels? What do they all have in common? They are supporting cultural Marxism. They still believe in systemic racism and exploit everything we can all manifest. Yeah, I'm talking about Black Lives Matter, the communist movement. Marxist lives matter. Yes, I did post a st- couple things too on my Twitter page on Bubba Wallace for being a hypocrite. You know, there were a couple of memes, you know, on his vehicle. Yeah, I've I done all that. It's interesting because um, I, got, I do I have my I have it on my computer. Yeah, let me see. Where are you? Maybe in here. Yeah. Like, right, it's like this one right here. A photo of him. You know, a little meme for the front of his vehicle. Compassion, love, understanding. Dear Marxism. And I did another one. A couple, yeah. I'm a hypocrite. By supporting a Marxist movement and exhibiting a symbol that disparages Christianity or the sect of Christians. There was a sect way back when. During the time of Nero Rome, he used the so-called peace symbol considered to be the broken cross. Something you should all look at. Nero's cross. Yeah. Yeah. So he did a hashtag for a communist movement and rep- and pre- displaying the broken cross. It's called a strifle, if I'm correct. But um, yeah, see, so you can always know how to call individuals out. I do. And it's not here to crucify the man or hate him personally or wish him or his family ill. That's totally irrelevant and vindictive. But the principle has to stand. If you're going to dish it out, you better learn to receive. That's to all the folks out there who are sympathizing for this communist movement. Tyranny as a whole. I put them up there with this movement. Equivalent to the Ku Klux Klan, the Neo-Nazis, and the Anti-Defamation League. Etc. All the same. I'm the equal opportunity insulter, and I don't give a damn what you think. The funny thing about this, too, is that everyone, you know, that's jumping on board, part of this her conformity, many of them can't even contemplate for themselves. And what you're witnessing right now, the so-called coup, is the oldest trick in the book. A lot of history behind this. It's been done so many times. Even in... The Russia became the Soviet Union. And of course the Weimar Republic of Germany. Over a hundred years ago. Under a hundred years ago. Okay? Nothing new at all. You got the mindless sheep out there worth their signs. Silence is violence. The Nazis did that in Germany. Could we say common interest? Yep. And of course, he got Pope Francis kissing the feet of the individuals that are black or African descent. Pathetic. He's always been a globalist Uncle Tom. Some of my shows you probably noticed go to the archives, especially when he made that speech at the House of Congress, House of um, House of Chambers in Washington D.C. He they should have tossed his ass out. Because all those little minions, the Chuck Schumers and Nancy Pelosi's, all there with their heads like like little kids hypnotized, sucking into the deception. And people, many of them are doing it right now, trying to massage us condition into technocratic slaves to accept this vision. Their vision. 
But here's the long run on this. They're going to fail. They're all part of the same global institution. It will be a rough ride? Absolutely. But it doesn't mean we should all belly up. To even talk about China maybe coming in any time after civil our civil war, Lord forbid. Interesting stories. I you know I check on other shows off my off time and observe responsibly. Many people like Steve Quayle, Dave Hodges, Mike Gamble, all call them quacks and crazies and all that. They're the same thing about Bill Cooper. They say the late Bill Cooper. They say the same thing about David Ike. But you know what? I always respect their content. Observe responsibly. It's called being vigilant. And of course, you hear the whole thing with the whole shebang that's going on with, with the mandatory mask and they go shut down, shut down restaurants. They don't go by the COVID-19 guidelines for the CDC and all that. Well, expect civil lawsuits to happen with the whole ADA Act, ADA law, the American Disability Act. Folks, you look, look it up. And the fact is this, it's an order, right? An invalid contract. Null and void. Broward, the commissioners in Broward, Bertha Henry, Mayor Holness, Trantellis, and, and the lackeys from uh, the Fort Lauderdale Commission, you would breach your oath of office, including Broward Sheriff um, Gregory Phony Tony wants to get involved now. Come on, you're supposed to protect people's rights, you heard, conformist. I'm not afraid to call you out. You're nothing more than a fraud as far as I'm concerned. Just like Scott Israel. Like predecessor to successor. That was appointed to you. I know one thing. I, I believe you, you'd, be, you'd, be, you'd probably be like Scott Israel. Lose the primaries. That would be the best thing what Broward County can do. Don't support Huey and Dewey for sheriffs. Because they think alike and smell the same. Prove me wrong if you dare. All right, sorry for a little digression there. I got to get this out of my chest because one thing I always do is observe thoroughly. You know, and I know I should take the initiative on going to these meetings and let them know how I feel. I'm going to have to do that, write some letters, call them out. Because I say, hey. You guys are being repugnant, deceptive, and you're business busting. These people have the right to make a damn living. You gonna tarnish that? All right? You are nothing without us. So take your little government knows best at games and shove it to oblivion. They have a right to make a living. They have families to feed. They may get evicted with your little candy-ass games. Not including you, Sheriff Tony. Nothing more than a poser in my book. Fraud with a badge. Now do yourself a favor. Step out, drop out of the race and get the hell out of Broward County because you're contaminating space, man. Now, I'm not here to go after Ryan Sands for picking you. Because I know he has a lot in his plate as well. I have my differences, but I know when, when I criticize him as well. So, enough of that. Let's just see here on what's happening in reference to the so-called revolution. Do a little quick commentary. This one's here from the Epoch Times. It's entitled, The Revolution Accelerates Again. This is a viewpoint by Merrick Chodeskowitz. Hopefully I pronounced that. Chodeskowitz. Yeah, okay. Chodeskowitz. Okay, cool. Hopefully I pronounced that. Didn't butcher the person's surname. Revolution accelerates occasionally afflicting on us war, disease, famine, destruction, only seemingly to recall and retract its merciless claws from Christian civilization. Then it simmers and bides its time. Sometimes, hold on here, Whoop. 
Then it simmers, and besides this time, sometimes it even goes into hibernation, reinventing itself into a variety of putative new forms. This, hit, this is the case here and now, but is nothing new. Since 1517, when Martin Luther pinned his 95 theses to the door at the um, castle, uh, castle Church in Weidenberg, Christendom has been convulsed by revolution. Tragically, for two centuries, Christians killed each other in the name of Christ. His followers rent themselves asunder with the Church of Rome, put on a defensive, put on a defense, defensive, excuse me. Protestantism appeared triumphant, but then it mostly burned itself out. Revolution, can, revolution had to seek another vessel, the reason of so-called enlightenment. Wow. I gotta do it this way. Shoot. Sorry about that. Let me see here. In 1789, the revolution belched a new. This time, this time, um, uh, in 1789, the, in France, the revolution belched with a new. This time, its uh, face displayed an outright anti-Christian uh, mask and it spoke in the language of science. Science became God. Soon would be, be soon pronounced dead. All the same Christians were martyred in the name of liberty, fraternity, and equality. The revolution spread its evil all over Europe and beyond. Even more calamities followed after the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia in 1917. Now, mart martyrdom proceeded in the name of of class struggle. Since World War II was Hitler's war and that Stalin won, the Soviet dictator expanded his power through revolution globally. Soon there was hardly a place where the communists or their allies were not in charge or at least subverting nations in a bid rule to rule everywhere. Resistance they returned underground and resorted to conspiratorial tactics. They banked on a creepy revolution. This was a case after 1968 in the United States. America's elite was still largely patriotic and determined to thought the leftists bid for power. They countered revolutionary violence with counter-revolutionary measures. They slapped the Reds down. Al Alice, the American radicals, adapted the new situation. Drafted in the field, they turned to Saul and Linsky and Antonio Gram Gramsci. The former taught them community organization, how to preserve it at the grassroots level while keeping the flame lit. The latter instructed them about a long march through the institutions. The main, the main targets were universities and government bureaucracies, and in particular at the lowest level, city, county, especially social services. At our institutions of higher learning, the takeover proceeded complement of the red professorate with the craven co um, convent of their liberal counterparts. However, college administrators, administrators facilitate the growth of leftist institutions such as diversity offices and similar outfits, which reflected the intellectual preaching of the radical intellectuals who conceptualized them. Ways of indoctrinated student debt ridden and increasingly unemployable graduates emerged into the world they were taught to hate. Howard Zinn was their gospel as far as hating America. The church also found herself under assault. They have always in desperate strains within the house of the Lord, including heretical ones. But until the Second Vatican Council, Peter's rock tended to hold out just fine, but the revolution would not let it be. It attacked from within deliberately and sur surreptitiously. Oftentimes, it restored to the agency of the well-meaning, youthful Catholic idiot, manipulated by fully aware radicals as well as external subversives, including the Soviet KGB infiltrators. If we can only change the church to be in tune with the time, it's going to save her. Went the progressive tune. It's plain to see the opposite has taken place. The temple is in a, is in a shambles. Faithful dwindle, dwindle in numbers 
the faith slacken in strength and clerical corruption is on the rise. Hence the crisis exasperates the blows to the body of Christ from the outside. Let's take the sexual abuse phenomenon, allegedly for, of epidemic proportions, afflicting the Roman Catholic Church. Please note that the outside attacks are not really on pedophiles or homosexuals. They are invariably on the church as an, as an institution. It is not about fettering out bad apples who infiltrated the Roman commun uh, communion in a dastardly and craven way to pursue their sexual urges, but on the church itself. According to this revolutionary narrative, the scandals reflect the very nature of the church, which is allegedly an evil, abusive, repressive, and retracting, retractionary institution. To deal, with, deal away with it, and everyone will be free to frolic, overthrow the church. So they um, burrowed under her patiently, fostering a popular culture conducive to the abuse of children. But then the revolution accelerated once again. In May this year, an unarmed black man died in police custody in Minneapolis. The streets erupted in righteous anger. Black Lives Matter and Antifa led the charge. The Marxist or communist revolutionaries to hire guns. I will continue on here. In places they were able to commandeer peaceful demonstrations and turn them into revolution. Into a revolution. So some compares it to color revolutions fomented by the U.S. State Department, the CIA, and the post-Soviet zone. According to this narrative, someone unleashed a pestilence on America. And it's even alleged that American leftist NGOs are behind this violent push, a la the Council on Foreign Relations, okay? Yet, the techniques of such upheavals are universal and replicable under any circumstances by anyone. Thus, the missing primacy of the foreign agent. This is a patently false ideology unless we assume that the deep state turns its techniques on the American people by inciting some of us against others. This is truly too far-fetched to be plausible. Admittedly, however, the revolution currently underway in the United States is domestically gen gen um, generated. That this not to deny that our enemies and others interfere. Russia, China, Iran, and others are definitely hard at work exasperating the situation, mostly on the Internet. The question remains... Kio Bono, well, that means who benefits. One can see this wave of violence as a revolution from above and by U.S. located elites. Whatever the re support the revolution receives from abroad, from China, Russia, Iran, and others, is most likely unsolicited by either grassroots domestic revolutionaries or entrenched progressive elites operating via the G NGOs and foundations. This is quite unlike 1968. What do they want? The mobs do not want to overthrow the region countercultural post-modernist system and its leaders. On the contrary, the mobs and, the, and their enablers want to smash resistance to the dominant paradigm. By destroying anything that smacks of traditional America, they went to entrench the post-modernist regime that deals away with democracy. The, the Constitution and the Republic for which it stands. Ultimately, they want to destroy the church. The revolution requires an arm again to usher in the paradise of earth of eternal justice and electoritarianism. Electoritarianism, excuse me. As always, nihil novi sub soul. There is nothing new under the sun. The situation is still precarious. Memos to the power that be. Repress the demonstrations calmly. Remember, the most are well-meaning, many of them useful idiots of the woke brigades, focused discreetly on leaders to neutralize them, create mobile, mobile special forces squads to preempt violence. Targeted takedowns should be the rule and not chaotic dispersals. 
Use psychological warfare, e.g., from spreading propaganda to banging shields, swaggering, show of force by helicopter overflights, non-lethal warfare tactics, tear gas, sonic weapons, channeling demonstrators, demonstrated traffic into easily controllable areas, and flexible law enforcement. Release individually rather than arrest. When detained, always make sure to confiscate the phones and other electronic devices and have very brief communications with, including sunken commands to the demonstrators. No discussions. Create no martyrs. Work off camera. Thought any momentum. Avoid employing a regular troops. They tend to start fraternizing after a while. Do not deploy the National Guard. They tend to be unprofessional and may overreact. Be firm and calm, and, sh and we shall overcome. Oramus, let us pray, and it should be just fine. After all, it has been promised to us that the gates of hell shall not overcome the kingdom of heaven. That means that, the, that we shall win in the end, but until then, we must fight the good fight. Yes, it will be... An insane era. May it last seven years, less or more. Hopefully that's not the case, but we still gotta prepare ourselves, folks. However, if you read stuff, doesn't matter from the Bible, Nostradamus, even astrologers talk about this in different ways. Even guys like David Icke and a few others. Be a rough ride. Prepare yourselves at the best of your ability. Fight the good fight, absolutely. If you have to use force if necessary, so be it. If they try to violate you and your family's space, you have the right to, to take them out. Use force. is justifiable. Now, I'm not a man that condones bellicose actions. Unless, like I said before, that's a duty under natural law. Self-preservation. Not just for yourselves, your families, loved ones, innocent people, etc. Because these little Sputniks that are involved in this hurricane movement, they're expendable. Even if they, can't, if they do their success in certain battles, they're still numbers. They do, bleed, they, do bleed, they do terminate their own. And some people may have compromised views, different views on what these tyrants have. They're considered a threat. They're considered an enemy. Well, I have a good friend of mine. We had different views, different political views, but he was a victim of um, I'm being uh, a victim of um, tyranny himself. He, he always, um, when I gave him the heads up about beware of the infiltrators and provocateurs, he he called me up two, three months later. He goes, Craig, thank you. You were right. And he told me the whole story of what happened. I'm like, damn, brother. But he kept that in mind. I went, thank you. He gave, I gave him for warning him on it. We still talk. I do love him dearly. However, um, he see he knows he knows about me. I, I see things in a bigger picture, and he's starting to learn that. That's why I don't really fall for the hype and hoopla on this revolution and so forth, because I know it's totally synthetic. Banks through the a bank rolling it. They don't care. Of course, the, the rest of the clowns, Soros only employ. He, he, he serves the oligarchs. This is why you always got to look at these things. They're called patterns. If you study history, you understand exactly where I'm coming from. And so this author of this article, Mr. Uh, Chardiskowitz. Very good intake. So you may have a man of faith, which is cool. Cannot... I will not. I always, always commend that. This is why we always gotta remain vigilant 
and teach your children what's a beautiful thing about liberty. Never ever let the government schools indoctrinate your kids. Always enhance their knowledge. They're not going to teach you in those damn pathetic schools. I know that for a fact. I question a lot of their rhetorical deception. They hated me back then. They don't like me now. And you know what? Who the hell cares? I don't get mad but inspired. But always examine the fine print. Good. When that time comes, all my fellow listeners will go, Craig was right. And I'm not going to pat myself in the back either. I'm not here to be an entitlement or a protege or anything like that. So um, we're going to do one more. It's in reference to mercenaries, the new American mercenary pocket history. Yes, I do. I am real critical of imperialism, American imperialism. And this was written by Major Danny Thurston, who was a, reti- who was a retired uh, militant from antiwar.com. Came out today. So it reads here. Let me see. Ooh. Okay, I gotta, gotta do the same thing here. The bizarre um the bizarre history of subsumed by other events last month's aborted invasion of Venezuela should have hardly shocked anyone. The United States has a long use of mercenaries to its bidding. They have provided Washington distance and deniability of unsavory operations. During the Cold War, the U.S. hoped that this would limit domestic and international pros- protest. Policymakers also discern mercenary alternatives to bloody, expensive quagmires like the Vietnam or Iraq wars. Traditionally, most of these hired guns were foreigners, ex-soldiers decline of declining European empires. Much of this parallel parallels the latest Venezuelan affair, however, American mercenaries in the system that produced them are relatively new. The stillborn coup exposed the blurred line between what's private and public in the modern U.S. warfare. Past and present evidence suggests the phenomenon is here to stay and to set and set to increase. There is now little doubt that the Trump administration has foreknowledgeable of the inclusion. It might even have played some part. If America's regional histor- history is an any indicator, it probably did. Washington has long sought President Nicolas Maduro's overthrow and recently put a lateral bounty on his head. Furthermore, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo all but admitted some role when he announced that the U.S. had no direct involvement. Yeah, like I'm going to buy his, buy his credibility, right? Shoot. Nevertheless, most mainstream reporting focus on the details of the of the harebrained scheme. All the profile, the mercenary mastermind, extreme beret Jordan Gert, um, Galdro, and his Silver Corps private security outfit, per pay company website he prefers, entrepreneur. Still, the economists. Clever monkier for the operation. Beza Piglet <laughs> has struck. There's been understandable fascination. It's also with soft air with the soft air rifle apparently tied it by one invader. However, if Venezuela tobacco seems stranger than fiction, that's because such adventures often are. More disturbingly, the failed coup reflects past US behavior and evidence the intensity of mercenaries. Also worrying was the substitution of American combat veterans for more traditional British, French, or South African ex-soldiers. A mercenary um, past. In the 19th century, such American adventurers were called filibusters and reported rep- repeatedly invaded Latin American countries. Most sought plunder, but some hoped to annex new slave trades to the Union. One famous filibuster even briefly installed as, pre- as president of Nicaragua. Nonetheless, will these invasions often receive financial support from prominent slaveholders? Washington's connection was the best tenuous. Cold, the Cold War 
was the, was the true golden age of U.S. mercenary employment. Even then, the Washington rarely hired Americans. European veterans of imperial wars and any communist Chinese or Cuban exiles predominated. The U.S. paid these fighters to install and prop up right-wing dictators or topple vaguely leftist governments. In the 1950s, the U.S. employed 15,000 exiled national soldiers who had fled to Burma after the Chinese Civil War. The Washington used them to challenge Communist China, discipline the left-leaning Burmese government, and to already smuggled heroin for the CIA. The, also, the U.S. also recruited Chinese exiles to pilot fighter bombers then in the, its then large co covert operation, toppling uncooperative Indonesian President Sukarno. Washington then supported, even provides lists of Communist Party members, new military strongmen, and stood by as he massacred half of a million leftist sympathizers in the matter of months. More well known was the CIA dis disaster CIA orchestrated in 1961 Bay of Pigs, invasion of Cuba by anti Castro exiles. Sorry about that. Yet, yet, le uh, yet, uh, yet less. Remember, it's the agency su uh, subsequent the use of Cuban expat in the decades of long campaign sabotage, of sabotage and terror against the island. In the mid 1960s, Africa, the CIA paid and organized European mercenaries, including famed Brit Mad Mike Hoare, to suppress an, a faintly socialist rebellion in eastern Congo. It had also operated a private air force piloted by Cuban exiles. They bombed rebels and ferried 500 Belgian paratroopers of the hated ex-colonial power into the fight. The U.S. then lost control of its higher guns, who unleashed an abusive fury. One mercenary recalls seizing a Congo Cong Congolese town after looting came the killing. Three days of execution of lynchings, of torture, of screams, and of terror. The unfazed CIA, the CIA raised a new mercenary army in 1974, back its favorite faction, the Angolian Civil War. The agency advanced $500,000 cash for Bob Denard, the infamous soldier of fortune and Congo veteran, who provided 20 fellow Frenchmen. Once again, U.S. added despised former colonialists, recruiting 300 Portuguese fellows for the campaign. According to the CIA's uh, mission chief, the key was deniability. Mercenaries seemed to be ant seemed to be the answer, preferably Europeans with the requisite military skills and perhaps experience in Africa, as long as they were not Americans. The operation failed miserably, but the core concepts persisted. The new American mercenaries. Trend in the modern war, mercenary recruitment had three main phases. After the Second World War, most soldier forces hailed from declining empires. The majority were disillusioned veterans of the final imperial and dirty wars in Kenya, Algeria, Vietnam, Congo, Angolia, and Mozambique. Mozambique. Most sought fortune, glory, or adventure, but some maintained connections to their home governments. This was particularly true in the era's mercenary Mecca, the Congo Civil War from 1960 to 65. There are the Britons were tactically supported by conservative factions in the parliament tied to local mining interests. One top mercenary was the brother of a prominent MP. The French congenit, con contingent was considered the most political, often described as fanatics, and operated as the uh, unofficial arms of Paris. Um, Paris Neo Imperial Africa policy. Yes, I'm out in the park by the New River. Looks like dogs are trying to have some fun here. <laughs> That's okay. As this generation died off, seasoned veterans from Africa's last two white settler regimes dominate the mercenary business. The thousands of white soldiers were demobilized after Rhodesia in 1980 and then apartheid South Africa in 1994 finally succumbed to the majority rule. Many out-of-work veterans of Rhodesia, Sela Scout, and South Africa's 30, 32, 32nd Battalion, the ex-unit of Le Leonardo DiCaprio's fictional character in Blood Diamond, turned guns for hire. Most who had served in earlier forever conflicts, Rhodesia's Bush War, 1964, 
1979, then the South African Border War from Border War. Interesting. The South African Border War from 1966 to 1989. And the more corporate in the in, in the more corporate 1990s, they formed official sounding private military companies or PMCs. The most famous executive outcomes, EO, sold his services in Angolia, Sierra Leone, and Papua New Guinea, New Guinea, enriching its leadership of conflict diamonds and other mining concessions. While white mercenaries are loathed by most Africans, so EO repeatedly rebranded until forced to shut down. Nevertheless, some of his former employees joined a Farishal 2004 coup plot in the Equatorial um, Guinea, funded by the son of former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. See, Margaret Thatcher, huh? the, the imperial family, right? <laughs> According to the group's leaders, Thatcher encouraged the mercenaries to next to overthrow Venezuela's Hugo Chavez, Maduro's predecessor. Interesting, right? As of late uh, 2015, aging EO alumni were battling a current U.S. nemesis, Boko Haram in Nigeria. Until recently, relatively few Americans joined the mercenary ranks, while hundreds, many Vietnam vets, fought for white Rhodesia in the 1970s. This was a rare ex exception. However, endless post-9-11 wars produced a surplus of younger American combat veterans. Hit hard by the 2008 economic crash and now facing pandemic unemployment, many war and terror veterans gladly collected six-figure salaries from private security companies. One of the first and most famous was an American rehash of executive outcomes Blackwater USA. And its founder and CEO was the ex-Navy SEAL Eric Prince, a mercenary future. Blackwater, the Blackwater model set an industry standard and undoubtedly influenced Godot's smaller civil corp op operation. It also portend, portends an American mercenary future. Prince is a revolution, is a religious fundamentalist, militarist, white ring zealot, was an early Trump, uh, uh, early Trump ally. His sister is in the current education secretary, Bestie Devals. <laughs> Interesting there, right? <laughs> I love this about a sibling power couple. Early on, the terror, the terror wars. George W. Bush's administration hired Blackwater to provide security in Afghanistan and Iraq. You should look up. You should see that movie, Iraq for Sale. Very interesting stuff. In Iraq, the company and Prince became infamous for their employees' violent excesses. I served in Baghdad when Blackwater contractors shot and killed 40 civilians without cause, according to the FBI. The anti-American blowback was plausible and predictable since most Iraqis understandably didn't distinguish between the private and, pub and private and public armed occupiers. Nevertheless, criminal convictions of the Blackwater guards and condemnation from senior military officers hardly stemmed the PMC tide, nor did it drive Prince permanently underground. Donald Trump's election generated fresh energy and new schemes from the ex-CEO. Since 2017, Prince had briefed the president on plans to privatize the, the entire Afghanistan war and recruit ex-spies to infiltrate liberal groups. Trump was reportedly interested but ultimately passed on total outsourcing of operations in the graveyard of empires. This hardly tempered Prince's oddball Imagination before Gaudrio Gaudrio beat him to the punch. Prince apparently considered raising his own mercenary army to topple Venezuela's Maduro. If Prince lo um, lost the battle in Afghanistan, he and his broader privatization project won the war. While Washington still hired European mercenaries that mentor his dubious proxies in Somalia. The Blackwater Civil Corps model is, is the new normal. After the Cold War, the Pentagon downsized the bloated military by privatizing key support positions. Simultaneously, it outsourced many protection duties. In 2003, Iraqi invasion, the proportion of security contractors was 10 times greater 
than it had been in the first Persian Gulf War, 1991. Yet the Iraq and Afghanistan occupations truly altered American war making. Despite already numerous charges, changes, the, contra uh, the contractor to soldier ratio was still 1 to 10 during the Gulf War. By 2016, contractors outnumbered uniformed troops 3 to 1 in Afghanistan. But see, there's a method to Washington's madness. High casualty rates at the height of the Iraq Afghan and Afghan wars demonstrate that even volunteer soldiers, flag draped coffins, raised pesky public ear. Ari, here. On the other hand, a few Americans know how much, or much, know or much care that more contractors and servicemen were killed in the ongoing wars. Thus, part of the mercenary st strategy, cynical brilliance, is that privatization helps enable perpetual war. In his 2019 State of the Union address, President Trump made at least one solid point: great nations do not fight endless wars. Now, that's he's really ended any not that he's really ended any Trump should have clarified they pay others to do it for them interesting there so um, yeah so imperialism is a big issue my friends so yes that's why I don't like this coup I don't like imperial wars doesn't matter where they're from it's irrelevant it's repugnant needs to be denounced including this ordeal is happening here with the coup in the United States, which is worldwide, of course. The big cloak and dagger adventure. We can all say hell no to all of them. So they're going on this soapbox parade like you're trying to think you're doing a great cause and get screwed in the end. Always look at things bigger than what it is. I support the funding the police on one area, the ATF. I should have said that in the very beginning. <laughs> but these mercenaries, it has to be stopped. Has to stop too. So, bring all troops home and revive the republic. And. Denounce the empire. Well, that will be it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share this throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you send something interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence to the quorum. Furthermore, I'll leave the footnotes of these articles on my Spreaker page. Plus, if you want to donate, you can hit me at paypal.me forward slash Loki Luck number three. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.